Mark 4, 3 to 9. Can we read together? Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the earth came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was cushed, and because it had no roots, it weeded away. And some fell, and some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seeds fell on good ground, and yielded the crop that sprang up, increased and produced, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. And he said to them, He who has ears. Sweet Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you would help us to understand this parable of the sower and understand that the role of the seed and the soil and this whole construction of your work so that we may be people that would do good works to the glory of your name. And I submit myself this morning and ask that your spirit take over my lips so that any words that will be authored will be words from heaven and not from my mind, not from my carnal self, in the name of Jesus. And we come against every spirit of destruction in this house. We we'll pray, sweet Holy Spirit, may you hover around this place and every heart in this place that as we plant the seed today, that your word will yield fruit to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You can take your seats. And so this morning, I want to talk about sowing good works. And um, initially, I wanted to use a long title. I wanted to call it, you know, to sound a bit, you know, I, I like playing with words. I wanted to call it the sower, the soil seed but I felt like that sounds very academic you know and um, over the course of the week I thought okay maybe just uh, good works need good grounds might make more sense because the reason why I say this is that in order to sow good works we must first of all learn uh, three principles that I'll be sharing this morning uh, one is that we must learn how to plant a tree can you help me say that learn how to plant a tree learn how to plant a tree. You know, I come across this very important uh, quote that I think that would make a lot of sense and uh, kind of tells us a bit more about sowing, sowing and sowing good works. The quote says, someone is sitting in a shade because someone planted a tree a long time ago. Think about that. Someone is sitting in a shade because someone planted a tree a long time ago. I think this is really true because if you think about it, you realize that any good works that we see today was as a result of the action of someone in the past. Someone who had a vision, someone who conceptualized the vision, and someone who executed the vision and planted the tree, the good works, the good works that many reap years later. You're sitting here today because someone had a vision to plant the tree under which shade that we are sitting on. Someone is sitting in a shade today because someone planted a tree. Someone planted a tree. And therefore, I believe that we must learn how to plant a tree. We must learn how to sow a seed. We must learn how to sow the seed of good works. But the second principle is more important. And that is the fact that good works need good grounds. Can you help me say that? Good works need good grounds. And when next you want to plant a tree, make sure. Make sure that you're sowing on good grounds. Because your good works need good grounds so that it can be a fruit. Now, the problem with a fig tree, I hear a lot of people talk about that. The problem with a fig tree is not really because it did not want to bear a fruit. But it's possible that it was planted in the wrong soil. If you plant something that you're supposed to plant uh, in the northern hemisphere, in the southern hemisphere, 
as possible you might not really bear fruit or even grow and sometimes many of us the reason why that the seed that we are planting is not bearing fruit is simply because we're planting on a wrong ground good works need good grounds good works need good grounds you know i don't care how good you preach i don't care uh, how charismatic you are or how powerful you are in prayer if if the heart is not ready uh, the word cannot really make much difference in your life if your heart is not ready if you're not ready for God to do what he ought to do in your life you know Jesus came to his hometown and was preaching and with all power and authority and he couldn't do much why because the hearts of the people were not ready good works need good grounds good works need good grounds and of course this has implication it simply means that if uh, if seed does not produce habits it doesn't really mean that the sower is inefficient if you're laboring and you're not seeing the result that you ought to see it doesn't necessarily mean that you are doing something wrong maybe you could change a strategy or whatever but it couldn't simply mean that the ground that you are toiling at it's not good ground or maybe not ready not ready not ready but most times it simply means that the ground it fell on was not ready for it so plant a seed plant a tree sow good works but make sure that it's planted on good ground i think that's very important make sure that it's planted on good ground and the top thing is the fact that sowing is a painful process uh, sowing is a painful process for the sower, for the seed, and even for the soil. Uh, once you plant something, it has to go through a process. It needs rain and it needs moisture. And as, as, as it, the seed breaks forth the ground, it's, it's an uncomfortable process. And so when you sow something, when you sow a good works, it's going to be uncomfortable for the soil and even the seed. <laughs> it's going to be uncomfortable for the soil and even the seed let me talk a bit about the pain of the soil because in order for you to sow you have to sort of introduce something unfamiliar in an unfamiliar place and really that's what sowing is all about uh, sowing is to introduce something that is undesirable and once you go out to sow a good works or sow a seed or sow good works, you're introducing something that is unfamiliar to whether it's a system, whether it's a community, whether it's in, in an individual's life. And when you set out to do that, it's an uncomfortable process. But, you know, remember what light is all about. Remember what light is all about. Because oftentimes we want to beam our light and when we beam our light, beaming your light is like sowing a seed. It's often uncomfortable because it's possible that people that you're trying to beam the light on or, 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 or the individual you're trying to beam the light on has been in that condition for a long time. Sowing is a painful process. For the sower, for the sower, for the sower, but also for the seed and the soil for the seed and the soil now the problem with sowing is the discomfort it causes to the seed and the soil that is planted it is that discomfort that sort of cracks the soil it is that discomfort that sort of breaks the ground so that something beautiful can be birthed it is that discomfort there's nobody that ever became anything worthwhile that didn't go through a season of discomfort because it's those discomfort and suffering perceived suffering that sort of makes us who we ought to be that gives us the character that we need to shine but it's important that we take these three principles to account especially when we start to think about sowing good works in this season 
whether it's in your family, whether it's in your community, whether it's in the work, you're at your workplace, whether it's in this church, whether it's in your ministry, in all that you do, it's important to bear these three principles in mind. But I think let's focus more on this parable this morning because that's our, that's our lens of analysis. And in this parable, we'll see um, uh, uh, three analytical lenses um, from which to read this text. You could decide to read this text from the perspective of the sower. You could decide to read the text from the perspective of the soil. You could decide to read the text from the perspective of the seed. And the Bible tells us that, that the farmer who sowed the seed, sowed randomly, sowed indiscriminately, and in the text, we see the sower as the subject of the text, the performer of the action. We see the soil as the object of the text, the receiver of the action. But also, we also see the seed there as well. We shouldn't ignore the seed because that's very important. We see the seed as the object of the proposition. That is the one or the thing that has been affected to change. But there are three ways we could interpret this text. Of course, you know... Look at the sower, the one who was sent to sow the seed of good works in the heart of others. Or we could look at the sower and look at his struggles, the difficulties, the challenges that went around preparing to even sow the seed. Or we could look at the soil, the one receiving the good works which is being sown. And it's important as we read this text to actually identify which of these are we? We could be the three in different capacities. But understand in which context are we either the sower or the seed or the soil. Because the soil is the one receiving the good works. And sometimes the soil might not be ready for the sower. Or the soil might not be ready for the water that will be poured in the soil. And the things, you know, introducing a fertilizer to a soil, I'm sure it's not a comfortable thing. Because it's like forced marriage, actually. Because you're putting a fertilizer on the soil. So you're forcing the soil to integrate with a fertilizer that is foreign. <laughs> and that's what happens when a sower introduces something to the soil. It's like forced marriage. <laughs> but also you can look at this text from the perspective of the seed. In fact, the seed is the actual good work that is being sown. And in fact, the thing about good works is that it can be very relative. There are good works that might be important or, important or significant for a time, for a season, for a particular kind of soil, for a particular kind of stuff. And there are good works that should be sown by a particular kind of sower. I feel like I'm still talking in parables. But I think for this kind of sermon, I think it's important to talk in parables. Because when you start to use example, <laughs> it starts to hit the nerves, you know. Because there are some good works that should be sowed by a particular kind of sower. You shouldn't be sowing maize if you don't have the capacity to sow maize or if you don't have the climate to sow maize. You shouldn't be sowing grain when you should be sowing beans. And each of these analytical frameworks are very relevant. Of course, depending on what you want to see from this text or how you want, what you want to draw out of it. And so oftentimes, when this passage is preached, it's usually the focus is on the sower. And not so much on the soil or the seed. But because the effectiveness of the sower is contingent on the kind of soil or the kind of seed that is sown. It is important that we observe these three perspectives. And so the parable, I believe, is both a caution and at the same time a clarion call to wash out for where you sow your seed can you help me look at someone and tell the person watch out for where you sow your seed watch out for where you sow your seed 
watch out for where you show your good works in this season but also remember it's also telling us to remember the soil the one who is receiving the good works and the different encumbrances that inhibit your good works from bearing fruit and so the text starts with the phrase listen behold a sower went out to sow listen behold a sower went out to sow in fact the phrase a sower went out to sow sounds like tautology because a sower is meant to sow but the fact that this text tells us that the sower went to sow is not tautology because the sower could be doing so many things the sower could go out to wet the, 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 the soil the sower could go out doing other things the sower could go out uh, 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 preparing the ground the sower could go out doing other things uh, other than sowing a seed the seed the seed the sower does not have to sow he could survey the area he could assess if it's worth taking the risk and, and that's often what happens when we want to do good works oftentimes we don't immediately go out sowing good works we assess the situation is this guy worth helping out <laughs> what's the risk um, that's a business term for it the cost and effect isn't it <laughs> what's the risk uh, uh, is it worth actually committing to this work uh, should I really sow my time to this should I sow my resources but the Bible tells us that the sower went to sow in other words it's telling us that the sower is created to sow <laughs> in other words if you are a sower if you want to plant a good works in this season you are created to do that can you help me just touch your chest and say i am created to sow i am created to sow the bible tells us that this planter went out to sow because it had no option because he had an option doing all the things but he was created to sow good works but and so when we when we sow the bible tells us something important which it's important that we focus on the bible tells us three things actually four things uh, 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 that as we begin to sow that it's very likely that three parts of our seed might perish when we sow uh, it's possible that little of it few percent or just one part of that might be preserved and so when the sower in this text sowed, the Bible tells us that three parts of it perished and one was preserved. And although the seed is sown to bear fruit, it requires nevertheless the concurrence of good soil to produce harvest. And so in this text we see four different grounds, four different grounds where our good works may end up. Now, as we begin to practice the shield values to love to live in humility and service to live a spirit empowered life to live in accountability and integrity to be doers of God's word as we begin to sow these seeds in our lives it will end up on this four grounds eat of those four grounds eat of those four grounds and it's important that we take note of that in the first case the seed is taken away because it fell on a path with no soil. The Bible tells us, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Now, uh, if it falls on the highway, if it falls along a pathway, the implication of this is that it will be immediately trampled on. Because you could sow a seed and do good works. 
uh, but because it's not rooted on a place that has good soil or enough soil or even a place that has soil it's only a matter of time and the wind of destruction can blow it away and that is why you find some of us we will be in church and listen to the word of God but because the, the word is not planted on uh, on a soil there's no soil your 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 heart is not fettered to receive the word as soon as after church and you know it's just flying it just gets in this ear and get up from the other ear I, I like the way the Bible talks describes this particular process in Luke Luke's account gives us a different narrative. It tells us uh, about the seed and the wayside. Luke 8, 12, it says, The seeds along the wayside are those who hear, but the devil comes and take away the word from their heart so that they may not believe and be saved or changed. Now, the question for us here is then to examine whether your heart it's a fertile ground for the good works that has been sown in the season. Whether it is trampled upon continually by distraction and idle thoughts. Is your heart a fertile ground for the seed and the good works that has been planted? Of course, that is if you're the soil. That is if you're the soil. That is if you're the soil. But also the question for us as the sowers, as we go out to do good works, is to watch out that sometimes, to watch out where we plant our good works. Make sure you don't plant it in a, in a place where there is no soil. I'm speaking in parables today. Make sure that you plant your good works in a place where there is soil because when you plant it in a place where there is no soil it's very likely that it will penetrate this air and get off to the other one but the second thing that we see the bible tells us that some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil the first part it had no soil but the second part it had little soil but not enough to really get it grounded the Bible tells us it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they weeded because they had no root. Now, here the seed, the Bible tells us, fails to produce a crop because the ground had little soil. The seed, of course, grew quickly, but then the soil was so shallow to hold the seed. In fact, I like the way Luke 8 tells us about this particular uh, um, 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 seed, this particular soil. In verse 13, Luke 8, 13, it tells us, The seed on rocky ground are those who hear the word and receive it with joy, but they have no root. They believe for a season, but in this time of testing, they fall away. Now, the problem with the rocky ground is that when times are tough, uh, they can have the, hear the word or receive the good works, but when times are tough, or because of the things that they're going through, uh, uh, because of the things that are happening in their life, uh, 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 the seed will not withstand the challenges of life. Your good works may easily be washed away if sown on rocky ground. If sown on rocky ground. Of course, the caution here is therefore as a sower to examine whether the places that you are sowing your seed have enough soil to contain the good works that you are sowing but also it's possible that it's not really the fault of the soil the receiver of the good works and sometimes we might need to do the work to help them add a bit of fertilizer, pouring so that they can have moisture to hold on your good works. But watch out and make sure you're not sowing that good works on rocky ground. But 
the third kind of ground that the text tells us it's a tonic ground, the tonic ground, the ground with a tonic soil. The Bible tells us other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plant so that they did not bear grain. Now, the seed this time failed to grow because of the thorniness of the soil. In fact, I like the way Luke 8 tells us or describes this. Luke 8, 14 tells us that the seeds that fell on among the thorns are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the worries, by the riches, and by the pleasures of this life. And their fruit does not mature. Now, for this particular group, um, the problem so much is the fact that there's so much going on in their life. In fact, there are people that have so much baggage in their life, going on in their life, that no matter how the good works that you do, the thorniness of their life would choke out the good works. In fact, to the point that the good works um, will be a problem, you know, like like you will be the bad person because you're doing good works but mind you it's not really about you it's about what's going on in the life of the person it's about what's going on in that organization because of the thorniness in their life the good works that you're being planted that you're planting might not be received well but what is the lesson here so are we saying that because someone has thorns in their life that we should ignore them? No. And I think this is where I think the values that we learned last week is important. Because when we go into service with a heart of humility, we have patience and self-control. Sometimes we might be planting good works, but we just might need to be patient with people. Because of the thorniness in their life, you might be trying to help a friend and your friend is not receiving it well. You're trying to sow good works. You have to be patient because the friend has tons that are going through depression. They are going through a lot of distress. And you need to be patient and pray for them. Good works need good grounds. Can you help me look at someone and announce that to them? Good works need good grounds need good grounds good grounds good grounds good grounds good grounds and then I have to ask a question especially if you are the soil is your heart fertile is your heart a good ground to plant good works or is your heart thorny that nothing good can pass through it? Is your life so distressed and you're so depressed and you're so, you're so toxic that nothing good can pass through your heart and your life? That even when God is sending people to plant good works in your heart, in your life, somehow because of the toxicity of your life, it's a problem because it's one thing to look at yourself as a sower but it's another thing to look at yourself as a soil is my heart open for change is my heart fertile to receive what the word of God from my heart without me criticizing God's word is my heart good and fertile to receive advice to receive counsel to receive wisdom from those from the elders from the leaders in my ministry without me choking the piece of wisdom and advice because of where I am and the toxic nature of my life I'm praying for you that whatever toxicity in your life whatever thing that is shocking God's good works in your life in the name of Jesus may that thing be dried up in the name of Jesus good works needs good grounds and the bible tells us about the the third ground the good ground 
the ground with a good soil. It's possible that you might sow for a long time and just maybe 10% of you sowing will get to the good grounds. But think about that. Statistically, this guy sold on four grounds and only one made sense. So in other words, that is telling us technically that we might sow and just and hundred percent of the times that we sow is very likely only 25 percent will yield fruit so don't be don't be too hard on yourself that you've worked so hard you've toyed uh, you've sown good seeds you've sown good works and somehow you're not seeing the manifestation of it it might just be the 25 percent the 25 percent the bible tells us still all the seeds fell on good soil it came up grew produced a crop some multiplying 30 some 60 some 100 fold and when it fell on good soil it grew and yielded habit harvest a good ground is a heart that is open to the sower a good ground is a heart that is open to change a good ground is a heart that is open to transitions. A good ground is a heart that does not sting the sower. And, you know, the lesson from this as a sword is simply to be open to the discomfort of sowing. Be open to the discomfort of sowing. Sowing is never going to be easy. It's a painful process because the seeds needs to bust the soil. What you're planting needs to bust that heart. And nobody's happy when their heart is in pain or aching <laughs> because you don't like what you're hearing. But be open to the discomfort of sowing. But I think there are two mandates for us from this text. One is to walk on ourselves. Walk on yourself. Can you help me look at someone and tell someone, walk on yourself. Walk on yourself. I know there's so many go things going on in your life. I know that you're dealing with a whole lot of distractions. I know that there's so many things taking your time. I know that there's so many things stressing you. But be open to the discomfort of sowing. Walk on yourself. Be open to the process. But the second mandate, I believe, is simply to keep sowing. The fact that someone or the ground is not open to the seed that you are sowing shouldn't discourage you from sowing. Because that's what you're created to do either way. The sower went out to sow. The sower should not stop sowing because the seed that are being planted are not bearing the kind of fruit he or she expects. We're created to sow. So keep sowing. Let's bow down our heads and pray. Keep sowing. Be encouraged. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. And while you're sowing, Learn about the soil that you are sent to plant in. Don't be discouraged by the process. Some may fall on the wayside. Others may fall on deaf ears. Others may fall on broken people. But surely your good works will fall on good soil. It might be 25%, but 25% is better than nothing. Your good works keep sowing. And so, Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for reminding us to keep sowing, to keep sowing, to keep sowing, to keep sowing, to walk on ourselves so that we may be good receiver of your good deeds, so that our hearts will be right and fertile for the change that you are orchestrating in this season. We know that not that our good works may, may not change everyone, but that we pray, Father, that you still give us the patience to work with those that might be dealing with 
the thorniness in their life and be patient to work with those that, that might not readily accept the good works that we are planting. Uh, those that might be distracted be, with the worriness of life, help us to have the patience to even when there is no soil that we can somehow pour out, share what we have with them so that they can grow in maturity. Mend us back together, Lord. As you give us this check, second chance to be mended by you, we'll come back to you. Mend us, put us back together. Put us back together, especially if we've, especially if we've not recognized the sowers in our lives, that it give us a second chance. Give us a second chance. 